When we think of international economics, we tend to think of international trade, or the movement of goods over national borders. Trade is a crucial element of international economics, and it allows for goods to be shared worldwide. However, when we look closely at the domestic policies to trade, we notice that there are some protectionary measures taken by governments to protect themselves from incoming cheaper goods. A largely known protectionary measure is known as tariffs, and here's how it works. Let's take two countries as examples, like Vietnam and the United States. Let's say both countries are producing textiles and apparel, and let's place the price of Vietnamese shirts at ten dollars a shirt. When we observe the U.S. market for apparel, we see that the U.S. supply and U.S. demand places equilibrium at thirty-six dollars a shirt, with a quantity of seventy-four million shirts being sold. Now, if the U.S. traded freely with Vietnam, meaning bringing in Vietnamese shirts for ten dollars a shirt. We see the new supply curve on this graph at ten dollars. What does this do to our situation? Well, we can identify that U.S. domestic industries or producers will produce 22 million shirts, and the U.S. consumers will want to purchase 126 million shirts. The difference created by the U.S. producers and consumers is filled by Vietnamese imports to the U.S. Where 104 million Vietnamese shirts will be imported to suffice the U.S. consumers' demand. While consumers are enjoying a much larger consumer surplus, starting from this smaller triangle to a much larger triangle, the producer surplus has shrunk greatly as the triangle has gotten smaller. As such, this will upset U.S. industries and they will begin to riot. Protests will shake up the government, and perhaps even lobby groups will be formed to demand for protectionary measures for U.S. domestic apparel industries. This will mean the U.S. government will agree to place a trade barrier, like a tariff. Now, a tariff is, as put simply in the Merriam-Webster dictionary, a tax on goods coming into or leaving a country. In this situation, we will consider taxes on goods coming into the U.S. from Vietnam. Let's say the U.S. government decided on a five-dollar per shirt tariff. This will mean that our Vietnam price line will rise to the fifteen-dollar line, because prices are raised by five dollars. This will mean that there will be a new U.S. demand alongside a new U.S. supply. U.S. industries will now have more power in the U.S. apparel market, and will now be supplying about thirty-two million shirts. While U.S. demand will fall to about 116 million shirts due to the rise in price. Now the imports from Vietnam will now only be 84 million shirts, which is fewer than the 104 million shirts that the U.S. imported before the tariff. What is the result from the tariff? Well, we recognize that through the tariff, prices have risen. This upsets the demand because now they are demanding fewer shirts than before. Due to the increased price, but still, the U.S. consumer surplus is still rising from what it would have been when consuming at original equilibrium before trade. The U.S. industries, however, will be happy because they now have more power in the market, for they are selling more shirts than before. But again, their producer surplus is smaller than what it would have been when producing at U.S. equilibrium before trade. However, they are now losing less surplus than what they would have lost through free trade. There is one last element to tariff, and that is the government gains. Tariffs are taxes on imported goods in this case, and this means that the U.S. government will earn money through tariffs. As we see here, Vietnamese imports amount to 84 million shirts, and with tariffs at five dollars a shirt. We see the U.S. government will be gaining five times 84 million, which amounts to 420 million dollars. So, the benefits of a tariff are that the U.S. government earns money through this trade transaction with Vietnam, and U.S. producers will be able to produce more and have more market power through this protectionary measure. Vietnam will suffer slightly with higher selling prices, but. Vietnam will continue to trade with the U.S. because Vietnamese shirts are still selling at that higher price of $15 a shirt. 
Now, there are methods of lowering tariffs or abolishing them. Currently, the Trans-Pacific Partnership Agreement, or TPP, is being discussed by the Obama administration, and that is a free trade agreement among Pacific countries and the U.S. Essentially, the TPP will drop tariffs and bring Vietnamese shirt prices back down to its original price at free trade. However, the U.S. government is still determining that for now, and the U.S. consumers will still be enjoying $15 shirts that include the tariff from Vietnam. That is how tariffs work in a short amount of time. I hope this helps you understand tariffs, and I hope you enjoy this video.